on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy, whether you like it or not. Today I'd like to show you something that's a little bit unusual for the Irish landscape. Now what's unusual about it is not that it's a Norman castle, it's not that it's in ruins, it's the fact that it's the only castle in Ireland to have been raised by a woman. Castle Roach, or Roach Castle as it's known locally, was built under the order of Roesia de Verdun in 1236. She was the first in her family to oversee the building of a castle so well fortified that it was completely impenetrable to the native gales, to whom such castles were a provocative display of power from an occupying force. Indeed, during its 400 year lifetime, the castle was known as the Frontier Castle between the raiding gales to the north and the English of Ireland who occupied the province to the south, which was then referred to as the Pale. Roesia's grandfather, Bertram de Verdun, a trusted advisor of Henry II, had been granted substantial lands in this area to the northeast of Dundalk after the Anglo-Norman invasion of 1169. He had also owned land in Belton, Leicestershire, and in Alton, Staffordshire in England. And if I'm not mistaken, he was actually responsible for the building of the original manor house on Castle Mount in Dundalk, which is the site we now refer to as Cúhollins Castle. When his granddaughter Roesia's first husband, Theobald Butler, died in 1230 whilst travelling in Poitou in France, Roesia came home to claim the lands left to her by her recently deceased father Nicholas. As a widow she was considered a femme soul and so no longer under the stewardship of a man. She had also inherited her dower lands from her recently deceased husband, making her very wealthy indeed. Her first act as an independent woman was to pay the fine of 700 marks for both her inheritance and to ensure she wouldn't have to marry again. Her next move is the stuff of myth and legend. The story goes that Rose offered her hand in marriage to the architect who could design her a suitable castle. Raging Rose, who is described in some accounts to have been warlike and known to lead her men, fully armed and on horseback, into battle, then invited her husband to their bridal suite in order to take in the view of their lands from its large window. Oh, husband! Come and see the view from our beautiful window! <laughs> he then conveniently fell and plummeted to his death, taking all the castle's secrets to the grave with him. History remembers this as the murder window, and Rose as some sort of murderous black widow. Whether there's any truth to it, or whether it's just the curse of independent and driven women in history, to be the subject of bad reputations and slander, it doesn't really matter to me or to anyone else in the area because she was still an occupying invader with her foot on the neck of the natives, no matter what way you slice it. The castle was largely destroyed by Edward Bruce and his forces on their way to ransack the town of Dundalk in the historic Battle of Dundalk on the 29th of June 1315. It was still intact enough, however, to play host to all English forces who are in Ireland in 1561, but was finally laid to ruin in 1641 during the Cromwellian invasion of Ireland. Rohesia, who is said to have been very pious, 
had long since retired to the Augustinian priory of Grasdieu, which she had founded in Leicestershire, and in 1242 she had become a nun. Her son inherited her lands after her death in the English priory in 1247. Her body was moved to Belton Parish Church after the dissolution of the monastery, and her likeness can still be seen on her tomb there. And I have to say, she doesn't look at like Cersei Lannister, I don't care what you say. <laughs> You might think that this is the end of the tale. Indeed, I did when I'd finished researching Rohesia's life. But according to North West Leicestershire District Council's YouTube channel, Rohesia's restless spirit has a legendary tale all of its own. Their video tells of the ghost of a white lady haunting the road which lies between Belton Parish Church and Grasdieu Priory a few fields over. Claims of vivid sightings and experiences have been attested to by tourists, locals, bus drivers and ghost hunters alike. The haunting is supposed to be connected to Rohesia's controversial resting place. It is thought that she is interned in Belton Parish Church, where her tomb lies. However, her tomb has been found to be empty. Investigations pointed to an incident in 1838 when a man named Ambrose Phillips de Lille arranged to have Rohesia's remains moved back to her Catholic Grasdieu Priory. However, the Vicar of Belton, Reverend Eddowes, was afraid his church would lose out on the revenue brought in by tourism, and so had Rohesia's remains secretly moved. Since there were renovations taking place in Belton Church at the time, it is thought that Rohesia's remains are still within the church building itself. Perhaps this is what keeps her soul endlessly wandering the earth. Or perhaps the interested parties are, like Reverend Edo, afraid of losing the revenue on tourism. Either way, it's a tale for another day. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Roach Castle, County Louth, and its intrepid builder, Rohesia de Verdun. If you are new to this channel and would like to see more videos about my local history, of which there is much, Please hit subscribe, like and share for more fun and witchy adventures. I upload every Thursday and you're not going to want to miss it. Slaw nagus goodbye and good luck to you.